The murder of former IRA commander Ger Jock Davison last May sent shockwaves through Belfast Republicanism. The police didn't know who did it, but others, desperate for revenge, decided they knew who it was. Three weeks ago, they shot Kevin McGuigan dead in front of his wife. This time, the police had suspects in mind. We believe that members of the provincial IRA have been involved, along with others, in the murder of Mr McGuigan. At issue, is the IRA back and in the business of murder? A political crisis has ignited which threatens to pull down the Stormont administration. Business will not be as usual. There will be no further meetings of the Northern Ireland executive. We're being told that the future of the Assembly is at stake. Tonight, how the murders of two Belfast Republicans led to this crisis. been shot dead in Belfast city centre. It happened at nine o'clock this morning in Welsh Street in the markets area. He was a former senior IRA leader in Belfast. A yellow scene of crime tent has been erected on a street outside a house. There were reports of distressing and emotional scenes as word of the murder spread among relatives and neighbours. Groups of people gathered in the adjoining streets as the police and ambulance services responded to the shooting. The killing of Jared Jock Davison was no ordinary murder. It was an appalling moment for his family, but it had shocking significance for others because the 47-year-old community worker was no ordinary civilian. He had been, multiple sources have confirmed, the commander of the IRA in Belfast as recently as 10 years ago. He had been close to the very top of the Republican movement. At his funeral, Sinn Féin's Jerry Kelly was among several familiar Republican faces, like Bobby Storey, named in Parliament as the one-time IRA intelligence boss. A Republican Guard of Honour headed his cortege. The beret and gloves were the unmistakable symbols of his paramilitary past, part of the ritual of commemoration for the IRA dead. has been shot dead in East Belfast. He's been named as Kevin McGuigan Sr., a well-known Republican. Within minutes of the shooting, heavily armed police were arriving in the short strand, throwing a security cordon around where the attack happened. It was just before 9 o'clock that the victim was shot in Cumber Court. Paramedics were quickly on the scene, and the man was taken to the Royal Victoria Hospital, but he died from his injuries. Kevin McGuigan had also been in the IRA. Like Davison, he'd been jailed. And like Davison, according to associates and Republican sources, he had killed for the IRA. But no IRA funeral for him. GEA players provided the guard of honor, and there was no beret, no gloves. A former Lord Mayor was the lone Sinn Féin representative. This was the funeral of a private citizen, only the tricolour hinting at his IRA past. The impact of these killings has resonated far beyond the short strand and markets areas on the edge of Belfast city centre. When the police said they believed IRA members were involved in Kevin McGuigan's murder, it set off a chain reaction, which now threatens the very existence of the Stormont Assembly. We must get rid of uh, paramilitary organisations and indeed the criminality which goes around them. 
The origins of this particular crisis go back decades to the relationship between two men who grew up a stone's throw from each other in the markets. Jock Davison was six years younger than Kevin McGuigan, but they had plenty in common, attending the same schools and both graduating into the IRA. Davison received a two-year sentence for terrorist offences while still a teenager in the mid-1980s. Kevin McGuigan was also jailed at the time. I met Kevin McGuigan uh, in the Pittsplex of Long Case when we were both IRA prisoners. I liked Kevin. He was a straight-laced uh, IRA volunteer, uh, very proud of, of his uh, IRA membership. He was arrested around 1986. Uh, him and another man were charged with kidnapping a member of the Territorial Army. Kevin McGuigan was convicted and spent six years in jail. Afterwards, he returned to the IRA. The ceasefire of 1994 was meant to bring an end to IRA killings, but the organization remained intact. Jerry Adams was speaking the truth. The IRA continued to kill, but under the cover name of direct action against drugs. The police say at least four men walked up to the vehicle and several shots were fired. They shot Mr. Collins in the knee and chest. Some reports claim that the gunmen shouted up the IRA as they ran off. 30-year-old Martin McCrory was hit by the hail of pellets and died later from his injuries. Last night's shooting is the fourth murder in Belfast in less than three weeks. Sinn Féin denied the IRA had any connection to the group, but that wasn't true. It was the IRA, yes. And do you know about the involvement of, of Jock Davidson and Kevin McGuigan in that group? Yes, um, they were together in that group. They, they shot a number of people. They were IRA hitmen. In fact, Republican sources say Jock Davison headed the team of killers. This particular killing spree by the IRA, or DAD, ended in 2001. At least 12 people had been murdered. By now, Jared Jock Davison was the overall boss of the IRA in Belfast, brigade commander. Kevin McGuigan remained a foot soldier. His Republican activity confined to putting up election posters for Sinn Féin. He didn't drink, didn't smoke. Ask his neighbours and they speak of a man devoted to his family, his nine children. But he had a record of meeting out ferocious punishment if he felt any of his family was threatened in any way. In 2003, he fell out with the IRA. I have been given various accounts of why this happened, but whatever the background, it ended very badly for him. On this very day, 12 years ago, September 8th, 2003, the IRA ordered Kevin McGuigan to an alleyway here in the Short Strand. He was then shot in the ankles and elbows a total of four times. It's been reported that Jock Davison, as the IRA commander, ordered the shooting. By this time, Anthony McIntyre had himself parted with the IRA. Now a high-profile public critic of Sinn Féin, Kevin McGuigan made contact with him from his hospital bed. I visited Kevin in the hospital and right. he was wearing a pair of black shorts. Uh, I have this image of him wearing black shorts, but he seemed to wear bandages on him when he had clothing. Jack Davison was said to have ordered it. Kevin told me this himself and Kevin explained it away in terms of uh, personality clashes and favouritism and that he wasn't treated justly and he wasn't treated fairly and that an IRA volunteer of his uh, standing should have got a fair hearing. Few outside of Republican circles knew anything about Davison and the shooting of his former comrade. But Jared Jock Davison would soon find himself in the middle of a high-profile murder investigation. The stabbing happened after a fight broke out in McGuinness's bar on May Street at around 11 o'clock last night. 
Brendan Devine was attacked in the bar and had his throat cut. He staggered with Robert outside. The 33-year-old man from the Short Strand suffered a stab wound to the stomach. He was found in Crummock Street and he died later in hospital. In 2005, Robert McCartney and his friend Brendan Devine got into a row with Davison and others in a bar in the markets. The row ended with Robert McCartney's killing. Robert's sister, Catherine, says if Davison hadn't been in the pub that night, her brother would be alive today. She says he gave the signal that led to her brother's death. The key role they played was in giving the order that Robert um, and Brendan were to be murdered. The order was a hand gesture across the throat. It was because of his position in the IRA, he was able to give the order and he was able, the people then followed the order. So yes, I blame, blame Jock Davison for that. Davison denied this, but after the killing, the IRA organized a cleanup to get rid of any evidence. That night when the IRA got the call of what had happened in the markets, they had a choice. Do we go in and do we cover it up and do we use all our political might to ensure that nobody's brought to boot for this? And they chose the latter. Now they don't only do that if you're important. And Jock obviously was very important. Initially, the IRA said it was not involved in the killing before admitting that some of its members had been at the center of events. Three men were charged with various offenses, but no one was convicted. Chuck Davison was never charged with any offense. That summer, the IRA formally ended its war. Ex-Republican prisoner Shana Walsh read the IRA statement. The leadership of Ogie and has formally ordered an end to the armed campaign. This will take effect from 4 p.m. this afternoon. All IRA units have been ordered to dump arms. All volunteers have been instructed to assist the development of purely political and democratic programs through exclusively peaceful means. The IRA had been stood down. All the killing was supposed to stop, but it didn't. Ask the parents of Paul Quinn in Cullihanna, South Armagh. He was 21, yes. and he was a, a cheeky, full of life boy. He was always acting a fool and loved to make a fool up you. And if he came in and I was standing doing the dishes, he'd come over and he'd lift me up nearly to hit the ceiling. Outside his home, Paul Quinn was known as someone who stood his ground. But when, in the autumn of 2007, he clashed with Republicans, someone decided he needed to be taught a lesson. A trap was set and he was lured to this shed. Paul Quinn was then set upon by up to a dozen men armed with iron bars and sticks studded with nails. He was beaten to death. We beat him every inch of him. Undertakers, they couldn't even put his, his arms across him. You know, in the car, hands. they had to put his hands down straight along his side, his hands was... We couldn't put rotary beats in his hands. Smashed up. Jerry Adams insisted that whoever killed Paul, it definitely was not Republicans. There is no Republican involvement whatsoever in this man's murder. The people involved are criminals. But that's not what the International Monitoring Commission, the organization set up to examine and report on paramilitary activities, concluded. It said, we do believe that those who were involved in the attack on him, in his brutal murder, included people who are members or former members, or who have associations with members or former members of the provisional IRA. However, the IMC absolved the IRA of ultimate responsibility because it concluded the attack had not been sanctioned. No one has ever been convicted of the murder of Paul Quinn just as in the case of Robert McCartney. By 2008, the International Monitoring Commission was reporting that it believed that the IRA was, by design, being allowed to wither away. 
It also said this, there have not been, nor do we foresee that there will be, formal announcements about the disbandment of all or parts of the structure. None of this prevented Bobby Story from appearing to threaten the return of the IRA when Jerry Adams was arrested by the PSNI last year. We have a message for the British government, for the Irish government, for the cabal that's out there. We ain't gone away, you know. If the IRA hadn't gone away, nor had the simmering row between Kevin McGuigan and Jock Davison. McGuigan, still angry about the punishment shooting, was now claiming he was certain Davison was an informer. I've been told that earlier this year, the two men confronted each other here on Ormo Avenue in the centre of Belfast. Kevin McGuigan was driving when he spotted Jock Davison. He pulled up alongside him and the two got involved in an angry verbal confrontation. It only ended when Kevin McGuigan drove off. The murder of Jared Jock Davison four months ago on the 5th of May unleashed a frenzy of shock and anger. The killing of the former IRA commander seemed like a strike at the heart of Belfast Republicanism. Among the first to the scene were two men once described in Parliament as IRA godfathers. Eddie Copeland, a North Belfast Republican, and Brian Gillen, not just a godfather. In 2001, Peter Robinson claimed Gillen was on the IRA Army Council. More evidence of Davison's standing in the Republican movement came at his funeral. Bobby Story was there. So too was Sean Spike Murray, once a senior figure in the IRA. Today, like Story, a senior figure in Sinn Féin. It's reported that police believe IRA members then began their own investigation into the Davison killing. 11 days after the murder, the police told Kevin McGuigan that he was under threat from Republicans. A few days later, on the 20th of May, the Irish News was reporting that one man had emerged as the main suspect. He wasn't named, but the description pointed clearly to Kevin McGuigan. His name was circulating in Republican areas quite a short time after the death of Mr Davidson. We ran a, a story which strongly suggested that a name was in the frame, as the, as the phrase goes, uh, and that uh, certain people were following him very closely, paying very close attention to him. In the following days, other papers also clearly pointed to Kevin McGuigan as the suspect. With hindsight, it now seems the ground was being laid to murder him. The police delivered two other warnings to his home before they actually interviewed him about the Davison killing, as a witness, not as a suspect. On Wednesday evening, the 12th of August, Kevin McGuigan was shot dead outside his home in the Short Strand. Kevin McGuigan and his wife, Dolores, drove into this cul-de-sac shortly before nine o'clock. They parked the car just about here before getting out and making the way to the family home just over there. At the very same time, two masked men, both carrying handguns, rushed up from behind. Dolores spotted them and shouted a warning, but it was too late. The men began firing. Kevin McGuigan was hit. He fell just inside the gate to the family home. An eyewitness then described what she called an execution. She said the two gunmen stood over Kevin McGuigan, arms outstretched, and fired again and again. The killers appear to have been convinced Kevin McGuigan killed Jock Davison, though there was never any proof of that. Ten days later, the police revealed who they believed to have killed Kevin McGuigan, current and former members of the IRA, and the little-known group called Action Against Drugs. The name is an echo of the earlier IRA front, Direct Action Against Drugs. This newer group has killed before and has issued many threats against alleged drug dealers. Raymond McCord has had several meetings with the group, the final one on a street in North Belfast last year. This is photographs here. Action Against Drugs, 
Drug dealers will be shot. Don't know the two gone men. He'd previously been given lists of alleged drug dealers and told to warn them to leave Northern Ireland or be shot dead. Drug suppliers seemed the group's only interest. To your knowledge, is Kevin McGuigan ever on, on the, the list that you saw? Kevin McGuigan was never on any list. But six days before Kevin McGuigan's murder, Action Against Drugs issued a new and unusual statement, saying anyone involved in the killing of Jock Davison was in its sights. Again, it seems the ground was being prepared for the murder of Kevin McGuigan. However, it was the fact that police believed IRA members were involved that focused so much attention on this killing. Tara McIntyre, BBC, can I ask you, as far as the general public are, have been concerned, the IRA, the IRA had gone away, they disbanded. How long has the PSNI believed, known in its terms, that the IRA continued to exist? What has happened is that a line of inquiry has opened up in a current murder investigation that has caused us to reassess uh, our position around this and our understanding of the current structures and involvement, the status of the provisional IRA. Ten years after the IRA was supposed to have left the stage, here we have the state saying that they still exist. Oh yes, but there was never a question of them disbanding. The instructions that they were given when uh, Shannon Walsh made his statement saying that volunteers should stand down and all weapons should be dumped. But he then said that volunteers should devote themselves to exclusively peaceful means and involve themselves in democratic programmes and nothing else whatsoever. So it, it wasn't a case of them disbanding. Their energies were to be redirected into politics. Jerry Adams intervened with what he might have hoped was a decisive message. Let me be very clear, the killings of Jock Davison and Kevin McGuigan were wrong. Those involved do not represent republicanism. They are not the IRA. Contrary to what the Chief Constable of the PSNI claims, the IRA has gone away. I know republicans, I work with them day in and day out, who have uh, been former IRA uh, members who are absolutely fully committed to building this peace process and that's the IRA that I know of. But language is important, precision here is important. Has the IRA disbanded or not? Well, the IRA have gone and I'm not going to start bonding about words. But you cannot say that the IRA no longer exists. I am saying, the, I am saying the IRA don't exist, that's what I'm saying. While Sinn Féin continue to deny IRA involvement, and the police say they believe the group Action Against Drugs was also involved. Most observers think events were driven and controlled by IRA members. Well, it, it was a professional hit job. Um, it looked like an IRA squad, at least four to six people involved. You don't think that up in 10 minutes. This looks like people who have done it before. Do you believe the, the line coming from the police that this, this group Action Against Drugs was, was involved in this centrally? No, I don't. Anthony McIntyre is certain it was the IRA. When Kevin McGuigan was shot, never once entered my mind there was anybody other than the IRA. Why? It was standard IRA modus operandi. Um, and uh, there was a type of killing that the IRA carried out. And the IRA certainly had a motive for uh, killing Kevin McGuigan. And that motive for uh, killing Kevin McGuigan was that the IRA would need to dissuade or deter people who would want to have a pop uh, at senior figures. The police say in public and behind closed doors, they have no evidence that the killing of Kevin McGuigan was authorized by the IRA's leadership. But a murder by IRA members was always going to pose a major threat to Stormont. One question I can ask you, were you surprised at the notion that the IRA still exists? Were you personally surprised by that notion? I don't think any of us were surprised. But why is the DUP in government with Sinn Féin on that basis? None of us were surprised that the IRA are still about. We understood the nature of Sinn Féin and the IRA, and we still do. OK? okay folks, thank you. Two weeks later, concern has turned to crisis. The Ulster Unionists left the Stormont administration. We will not sit in a side room drinking coffee 
while the DUP and Sinn Féin care about another little seedy deal. The DUP has halted routine executive meetings, threatening resignations if the Republican response is not to its satisfaction. But you've always thought that the IRA continued to exist. Well, why is it a particular issue right now? Well, because somebody's dead. But, because they, but, 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 but that then means that the fact that the, the IRA continued to exist of itself wasn't an issue for you. No, the, the, the position was that uh, every chief constable and every IMC report for a period of years indicated that the organisation of the IRA continued to wither away. That's the phrase they used. But they never said disbanded. They said wither away seven years ago. Now, if something is withering away seven years ago, you would expect it to be dead and buried six years ago. Nobody has said what George Hamilton said in the aftermath of a murder. That's why the organisation of the IRA has to be dismantled. Talks sponsored by the British and Irish governments began today. With the dispute over welfare reform still unresolved, this latest crisis has clearly raised the stakes. Let's be very honest about it. We have to accept, and I acknowledge that on this programme, that we are moving into a period here which could be the life or death of these political institutions. I don't want that. And in all of our discussions, not least in the last number of days, we've made it very clear. We want these institutions to work. We don't want them just to survive. We want them to work. And that's what we're committed to doing, because if they fail, I think we have to say to ourselves, will they return anytime soon? And that, I think, leaves a big question mark. Can the political process survive with an IRA still in existence, supporting peace, but with members who reserve the right to kill people like Kevin McGuigan? What police and many Republicans agree on is that the provisional IRA of today is a much changed organisation. It's a, a shadow structure that it's withdrawn very deep into itself. It exists for an entirely different purpose uh, than it uh, previously did. It's no longer at war with the British state. The PSNI has refused to say if an army council still exists. But one part of the IRA framework almost certainly does. It's called the IRA Executive, a group of as many as 12 senior IRA people, veterans, who sit above the Army Council as the official trustees of the IRA's organisation and the guardians of its rulebook. One man who asked not to be identified, but who has held a prominent role in the Republican movement, told me that by definition, if the IRA remains, then the IRA executive does too. My source said he understood that instead of the original military structure, the IRA now relies on a network of individuals and their role is to maintain a presence rather than carry out attacks. According to Republican sources, that network of individuals in Belfast was centrally involved in avenging Jock Davison. They suggest the go-ahead to kill Kevin McGuigan was given by one man reported to have held a top IRA rank. They insist the current IRA leadership did not sanction the killing. But did the leadership know an attack was planned? And was it unable or unwilling to stop it? Meanwhile, in the short strand, real fear and real tensions remain. Police have now told three other members of the extended McGuigan family that they are under threat from Republicans. The family can only hope the bloodletting is ended. <laughs>